back with another NAS. This is from TerraMaster. This is their F4 425 Plus. This is a four bay NAS that promises pro level performance for the home enthusiast. I really like this shell. It's like a kind of a, almost feels stippled or 3D printed. It's not, but you know, that kind of aluminum finish, it just, it's really nice. I like them when they're plastic cause they're light, but this thing has some weight to it, especially once you put four hard drives in it. But man, that sure is satisfying. This has a quad core Intel N150 that'll do up to 3.6 gigahertz. Uh, does AES-NI encryption does Intel graphics for 8K video transcoding. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR5 pre-installed. You can take that up to 32 gigabytes if you're running a bunch of virtual machines or something and you need that. It does have dual five gigabit LAN and it will support SMB multi-channel and link aggregation for speeds up to 1,020 megabytes a second. I'll never use that speed for the things that I do, but it's nice to have for those that do in their home labs. It has three NVMe M.2 slots and four drive bays. I don't have any NVMe in here right now. I've got like 15 NVMe and they're all in use by other things right now. And they're just not in the budget to put in here. But I do have four drives in here and I'm just using them as like network storage. I don't have any RAID configurations going right now, but you can do that. For me, the stuff that I put on some of my NASes, I don't care if I lose. It's just there for convenience. Other things... I go to the point where I have like, you know, double parity and stuff for some of that, but I'm not using this for anything like, it does have a 90 watt power supply, just, you know, your typical power brick. It has three USB 3.2 type A ports and one USB type C point C. It has three USB 3.2 type A, one USB type C and an HDMI out. Again, we'll look at the back in a second. It'll do sequential writes up to 1020 megabytes per second and 4K random read writes of 280 KIOPS. Obviously that's gonna depend on what drives you're using. Uh, the hard drives I have in here are not going to do anything remotely like that. Now it does have their operating system on here. I hear you can put other operating systems on here if you want. I've just left theirs on there. It seems pretty decent. It kind of reminds me of like a little virtual machine on its own. We'll take a look at that. But you can have, you know, Docker stuff on here, virtual box support. So you can do VM self-hosted apps. I think it like has a WordPress app and all kinds of weird stuff in it that you could use. The 4K hardware decoding and native support is there for Plex, MB, and Jellyfin. It's probably make a pretty legit little Plex server if that was what you wanted to do with it. It has some built-in download tools like uh, ARIA2 and Zoom Lee. So you can do media automation. You know, their TOS 6 operating system is somewhat recently updated at the time of this video. It has 40 new features, 370 improvements. So it has like a better UI, stronger security, faster performance. I've been messing around with it for a few days and I'm pretty happy with it so far. I'm sure as I get to learn it more, I'll, you know, find some things that I don't like about it. But this can be any, you know, NAS operating system that you use. This does have Cloud Sync integration for Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, Baidu, and Alibaba Cloud with two ink two-way sync and bandwidth control on those. You know, you can do like on-prem file server for teams that need land speed file access on this. Um, I could use it to host my editing files. I, I use one that's all SSDs, all NVMe SSDs, because it's just a little bit faster, but like you could put better like 10,000 RPM drives in here or the NVMe or whatever and do that. You can run web mail, FTP servers. Uh, it does have MySQL as a install that I saw in their program thing. So you could have your MySQL server, node.js, Java VM, stuff like that. Let's look at the ports. You have that one there. Um, the drives remove real easy. They just slide out. To put them in, you just pop these slide panels out. They pop in. It did come with screws if you wanted to screw stuff in. Those may have actually been for the NVMe now that I think about it. And then I, I have found that depending on how thick the drive is, some of these drives are a little thick. You have to be careful when you slide it in just to get it lined up right, but not a big deal. Then on the back here, you have your dual port, you have your HDMI and all of that. and does have a decent fan. And even this fan grill is, it's much thinner aluminum, but it's still some kind of, you know, aluminum and it's just nice. Like the only thing plastic is here on the front, the faceplate, and then these. And then I just have really cheap two terabytes on here that I go on. Go HDD for this video. What I'm gonna use this for, I don't really care about. So these are like crappy 7,200 RPM drives with 32 megs of cache and you know, two terabytes. They had like a two year warranty. I got them for like 20 bucks a piece. I have the NAS just set up here on the desk and I think I'm gonna leave it there. Right now I'm running this over power line for the internet on it. 
it's just the networking situation I have here. We're going to install Zorin. There we go. Had to figure out where to click. Try to click on the picture. And we're just going to fly through all these in the default settings. Sure. Yes. I give this 100 gigabytes. Um, you know, there's what? Eight terabytes in this thing. So <laughs> I can afford to just start with 100 gigabytes. Yep. Continue. So it doesn't like that. So we'll give it inverse should be in there. I should have done farts like LGR does <laughs> or um, action retro. I forget what he does, but uh, he's got his own little one too. I should come up with mine. Now, I don't know how fast this installer is just on a normal computer. So I can't really benchmark that here, but you know, running a virtual machine on an ass, whatever. I will go ahead and skip through all of this. It's almost done here. Um, once, once we play with this for a second, I've decided that since I haven't transferred a whole lot of stuff over to this, just photos from my phones, I'm going to go ahead and change to either RAID 0 or maybe uh, 10. The write speeds in these drives are like painfully slow. I think I'll do 10. It'll be fine for these virtual machines. I'm not going to be sad if I lose anything, but it would be nice to have redundancy for my photos. So I think we're going to do that. Uh, I won't show that on here, but that should be a pretty easy process. You know, this has been a very long install. I thought it was almost done. It popped up to almost finished copying files like a minute and a half ago. Okay, so don't be like me. Don't use really crappy low RPM drives and then try to install a virtual machine when you're just using it as network storage instead of in a RAID configuration. Because I've been doing this for an hour. <laughs> Uh, I almost want to just stop it and switch to a uh, slightly faster RAID configuration. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, so we're finally finished here. I'll go ahead and let it restart. And there we go. So we're going to go into Zorin here. And there we go. We are in Zorin on our virtual machine. Uh, start a tour. Open the menu to launch app. Oh, it even detected to run a virtual machine. I guess we'll go ahead and let it do that then. Oh, well, never mind. The network adopter is not set up and I don't really feel like messing with it. And I hate virtual machines. So we'll just continue through all of this stuff. And yeah, 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 we don't want to do any of that. Cool. They say this one's kind of like Windows. Oh yeah, they really have set it up to look like Windows. There's a virtual machine running. You kind of get the idea. You guys can go in and play with that yourself. Go ahead and disconnect from the virtual machine. Close my RDP. Uh, since I'm wiping these drives anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and stop, power off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and set up a faster NAS configuration. I guess I'll go ahead and show you that. So I'm in here and I'm deleting my volume. And this will take a while, but that's okay because i got to go do some errands. Not deleting the volume, but the other parts. We can let that run while I'm gone. All right, so we got our storage pool here. We're going to create a new volume, existing storage pool. I'm not actually sure how to set different raids on this. So let me go investigate that and we'll be back. All right. It looks like I had to delete the storage pool first. So we'll let that do that. And then I think I know what I'm doing. This is kind of why I was just using it as like generic network attached storage when I first set it up because it just started as this and I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, cool. So let's create a pool. There we go. So what did I say I was going to do it as? I forget. Let's go with RAID 10. I mean, striping would be the fastest in zero, but I think I want to do 10. That way I have a little bit of redundancy. What are they saying T-RAID is? Something of their own. Anyway, let me go back to this. We're going to set up RAID 10. Confirm. Now I'm going to let this do its thing. And then I'm going to put a virtual machine back on. I'm going to see if that doesn't install faster. That took over an hour to install last time. So, yeah, I mean, it could be that version of Linux, but I, I doubt it. So I think it was just the slowness of these drives and stuff. So let's see what 10 does. All right, so the switching over to the RAID uh, 10 is done. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to move the install media back over. So we're going to come here, come here. I'm going to go ahead and paste the ISOs back over. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and see about getting them installed. Went ahead and got everything set up again. So we're gonna go ahead and start the machine. I'm gonna look at the time here. It is 7.15, took a little over an hour last time. So we'll see if it's a little bit better in RAID 10 or if I just really need to put some better drives in this thing. 
we will go ahead and come back once we uh, are installed. Well, unfortunately, that's not gonna be much faster, so I'm just gonna go ahead and not show you that. It seems like the real limitation on installing at least that specific version of Linux is the processing power of the NAS, just like unpacking all the files. I'm pretty happy with this NAS. Um, I'm definitely gonna still use it for virtual machines. It's just, they're not gonna install necessarily the fastest, which is okay. And I'll probably just have some Linux stuff on here anyway that, uh, you know, isn't super gooey heavy like that version. I just wanted to see that because they say it's kind of like Windows and that's an education version and I wanted to see what kind of stuff they put on there. But yeah, I'm really happy with this NAS.